On this channel, we have spoken quite a bit about the first Jedi, and how they were the predecessors of the more modern Jedi that we're more familiar with. The ways of the first Jedi in the galaxy were quite different, as they actually had no qualms with making dealings with the dark side, in controlled amounts of course, as they believed it was the way of the Force to observe both the calming ways of Ashla and the chaotic storms of Bogan. These of course being the ancient Dai Bendu names for the light and the dark side. However, as we have noted, by the time of the Old Republic, the Jedi were strictly adhering to the light side, and when the Clone Wars eventually rolled around, the Jedi were so enraptured in dogma that they couldn't see a Sith plot unraveling right before their eyes. It is worth noting that the first and second great Jedi schisms didn't result because the Dark Jedi were not allowed to study the dark side, but rather, it was because the way they were using the magic that they learned to manipulate and mutate life itself creating abominations. The Jedi of this time didn't mind a controlled amount of the dark side, but not in a way that perverted the balance of life and death. Eventually, the Jedi would outlaw the practice of any dark material at all, pledging that the light side was the only true balance. But why is this? Where were all the accounts by the first Jedi that proved the more modern Jedi wrong, and that the dark side in small amounts could be useful? How did the Jedi stray so far from balance? Well, my friends, our archaeologists have made a critical discovery, and we now wish to share it with all of you, as we can very clearly point to exactly where the Jedi went wrong with their understanding of the Force. And today, we wanted to discuss one of the darkest days in the entire Jedi Order's history. The first Jedi in many corners of the fandom are considered the perfect Jedi, or the Jedi Order. Individuals that had a complete and full understanding of both the light and the dark side of the Force and their place in the galaxy. That is why it is so important to pin down exactly why the more modern Jedi missed out on this entirely. Our story begins many years after the Great Hyperspace War, and it is all centered around the Great Library on the world of Osis. The Great Hyperspace War was the name of a conflict that occurred when the Sith Empire officially would go to war with the Galactic Republic for the first time ever. Naga Sadao would be the cause of this war due to him feeling as though the Sith had grown stagnant. Up until this point, the Sith Empire and the Republic were living in blissful ignorance and peace from one another. Following Naga Sadao's death though, the destruction of the Sith Empire would swiftly follow. But as far as the homeworld of the Jedi Osis goes, this was the current world that the Jedi resided on, as they had not yet constructed their temple on Coruscant. This was the hub of the most Jedi knowledge in the entire galaxy more so even than Coruscant during the Clone War. The Jedi Order at this point in time, it's very important to understand how they functioned. They were entirely separate from the Republic, and up until this point, the Jedi would aid facets of the Republic in their times of need, but were still a separate entity of peacekeepers. The Jedi had moved their home from Tython to Osis following the Second Great Schism and Divide, and during the war that had followed, Tython had become a wasteland. Following the Great Hyperspace War, the Great Library was constructed by Master Odan Ur. Master Odan Ur assembled many ancient documents and scrolls detailing every detail of the sentient history and ingenuity of the Jedi and the Force wielders that came before. Home to the Order after leaving their world of Tython, the Great Library became a symbol of the Jedi and a symbol to the galaxy the greatest storehouse of knowledge in the entire universe. Over the ensuing centuries, the Jedi and Osis would thrive as a center of great wisdom, encouraging visitors from across the Galactic Republic to visit and study the archives freely. Essentially, this was like our world's Library of Alexandria, except on a galaxy-wide scale. This is quite fascinating, because as we know, the Jedi archives by the time of the Clone Wars were restricted to Jedi eyes only. In stark contrast, the library on Osis was a place for anyone, and any race or people to not only visit, but to ultimately contribute to the Grand Library. Over centuries, the library would grow to an absolutely monumental scale, spanning many buildings on the world. In fact, the library itself was so large that it served as the function of the main Jedi Temple for the period of time. The grand importance and acceptance of the Library of Osis cannot be understated. The sharing of experiences and knowledge was unprecedented, and it is one of the most beautiful things that the galaxy had ever seen, serving as the center point for the Jedi for hundreds upon hundreds of years. But this grand renaissance would not last forever, and a dark age of war would fall upon the Grand Library. 
Exar Kun had proclaimed war on the Republic and on the Jedi. He had returned to the library and seduced many young Jedi to his cause, offering them insane power, power that he openly displayed. Following this, Exar Kun would storm the great library halls and tunnel deep into the Chamber of Antiquity. It was here where there was a deep-rooted room far beneath the surface of Osis, where Master Odan Ur would study all artifacts from all cultures. Exar Kun demanded an artifact known as the Dark Holocron from the Jedi Master, a well of Sith knowledge that the Jedi had taken from the wreckage of one of Naga Sadao's ships. Odan Ur refused, and Exar Kun brutally slew him where he stood, claiming all of the holocrons in the chamber for the way of the Sith. Exar Kun's forces used an ancient Sith weapon aboard a Sith battleship to unleash a cataclysm that would wreck the surface of Osis, a final testament that the Sith had returned and that the Jedi would be utterly destroyed. Times grew bitter and desperate, as within a few hours the Jedi were aware that the destruction of the Kron Cluster would create a supernova that would wipe out all life on Osis. As special teams of Jedi hastily recorded data and transferred artifacts aboard ships fleeing the system, desperate to conserve as much as possible from the grand beautiful library of Osis. Many Jedi would resign themselves to this fate, attempting to save as much knowledge and scrolls as possible. Other Jedi chose to flee, saving themselves. Scrolls, data chips, holocrons, lightsabers, and journals were all loaded aboard transports, while beautiful works of art and mosaics were delicately removed from the floors and walls, placed in precise patterns in the vessels that would ferry them to safety. Despite the heroic efforts of many, only a fraction of the ancient materials would be saved and the knowledge that was saved was sent to Exis Station where it would be stored in a temporary library before eventually being transferred to the newly built Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Only a portion of the thousands of years of knowledge kept in the library was saved, and as Exar Kun cackled, the Great Library of Osis was destroyed. This not only was a devastating blow to the Jedi, but to the galaxy itself. So much lore and knowledge was lost on a single day, and it now makes sense to us why the Jedi seemed to be so ignorant about things they should surely know. As the Jedi scrambled to evacuate the scrolls and artifacts, the Sith came one last time, where they would find the final stand of Master Ode Banar. Using an ability unique to his species, he buried a collection of ancient lightsabers and rooted himself over them, becoming a tree-like being and binding his life force to the planets itself, ensuring that the artifacts would evade the claws of the Sith. As the supernova's wave approached, the last of the evacuation ships launched, and the Sith retreated. While most Jedi evacuated, some did not. Many Jedi were left inside the library and surrounding areas, as well as the countless other species that had lived on the world. While many of those who survived the planet's eradication died off in the ensuing years, the hardier of those species preserved and formed a group of tribal primitives known as the Yasana. This group embraced the Force-based traditions of their ancestors, and the Yasana stood sentinel over the ruins of the library, keeping out intruders and safeguarding the secrets that remained intact deep within. The place's significance still not lost after it was destroyed. As the Yasana stood watch, the towers of the library crumbled, and the facade slowly grew more and more deteriorated. Eventually, the once grand library blended in with the bleak landscape of a now barren world, a mountain of crumbling rock amid the wrecks of the ancient star cruisers of old battleships. The Yasana tribes eventually forgot the exact nature of the library following centuries, and its exact location became the stuff of legends. Despite its importance to the history of the Jedi, the Jedi seldom held recovery missions on the world, occasionally dispatching members of the Academy of the Jedi Archaeology Group to accompany the scientists and researchers of an Institute of Antiques at the University of Agamar of Diggs, but nothing beyond this. What was once the epicenter of the galaxy now lie in ruin. It would be ten years after the Battle of Yavin that Jedi Grandmaster Luke Skywalker would travel to Osis, searching for the remnants of the Great Library. Led to the world via clues in an ancient holocron, Skywalker and his student landed on the planet and immediately noted the Jedi's influence in the dilapidated buildings. Not long after the Grandmaster's arrival, 
the Jedi were confronted by the Yasana people and were forced to engage them in order to protect themselves. The Yasana, though, quickly noted that the two intruders were drawing on the light side and ended their attack. The group rejoiced for the return of the Jedi after thousands of years. The celebration, though, was short-lived as Imperial forces had tracked the Jedi to the planet and began an assault. After fending off an Imperial attack, Luke would find the trove of antique lightsabers under the tree of Master Benar, the Jedi who gave his life centuries ago. Luke would collect the weapons with great reverence, finding them still in working order, and the Jedi forged a good relationship with the Yasana tribe. A new order began, and Luke began plans to excavate the entire site. Luke was escorted through the ruins of the library by the Yasana tribe filled with grief and sadness for all the knowledge that had been lost, but a new sense of hope, a brighter future. Amazed, Luke found that many of the scrolls and books were in good condition, with him shocked that the Clone Wars era Jedi had paid no mind to the Grand Library and what wasted away there. With the help of the New Republic, Luke Skywalker reformed the Jedi Order on much of this old doctrine and this ancient structure, taking with them all of the retrievable data for study. And it would be because of the Grand Library of Osis that Grandmaster Luke would usher in a new order of pure, balanced Jedi. What is tragic, though, is if the Grand Library had been preserved, the Jedi that we saw in the Clone Wars would be far more enlightened, far more powerful than what we saw and Lord Sidious and the Sith very likely would have not been able to rise to power and prominence, thwarted because the Jedi of this era held a familiarity and even a respect for the dark side. We even believed that had the library not been destroyed when the Sith were weaker during the Brotherhood of Darkness, that the Jedi would have been able to destroy them utterly. A Jedi with all of this knowledge, all of the ancient rituals, and insights into the Force. They could have been truly unstoppable as warriors of the lights, Ronins of the Force itself. But that is why, my friends, this is one of the darkest days in all of the Jedi Order's history, and one of the darkest days for the entire galaxy. The loss of wisdom, the loss of many of the foundational knowledge of the Force itself. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this grand tragedy of Star Wars lore? What do you think would have happened if they had stopped Exar Kun's raid on the Grand Library of Osis? Would the Jedi have grown to be unprecedented in power, and would the Sith have been utterly destroyed? I hope you've enjoyed this deeper dive into Star Wars lore, and absolutely one of the saddest moments in all of galactic history. Thank you so much, my friends, for visiting the channel today. There is no channel without you. And as always, may the Force be with you, and I hope that you are having an amazing day.